Okay, cool. So we're in the home stretch now. Now all we need to do is get the wall jump and wall hop working. So let's hop into our code and start off by declaring two new vector twos. Okay. Um, they're both going to be public. So we'll do it here. We'll say public vector two. So we're going to start off by declaring two new vector twos that are going to store a vector that is used to determine the direction at which we jump off of the walls. So this allows you to, when you jump off the walls, if you want it to be a steeper or a lower angle, adjust that to what suits your game best. So we'll say wall hop direction, and we'll say wall jump direction. So in start, we're just going to normalize those vectors by just saying wall hop direction dot normalize and wall jump direction dot normalize. And what that means is it's just going to make it so that the, the vector itself equals one. That way, when we multiply the components into uh, the force that we're going to add, it doesn't we can specify that force and it'll always be that force. Speaking of which, we need to define uh, floats that are, going to that are going to store the force that we wanna jump or hop off of the wall with. So public float, wall hop force, and public float, wall jump force. Now, another thing we're going to have to keep track of is um, the direction we're facing, because we're currently doing that using a bool, and usually with the, the movement, we use the input direction to do the math, but for jumping off the wall, we're not going to be putting any x-axis input into the, uh, into the character, so we want to keep track of which way we're facing there as well. So I'm just gonna come up here and declare another private int. And I'm just gonna call it facing direction again. Where negative one is gonna be left and one is right. We'll come down to flip. Actually, we need to initialize facing direction as one, seeing as is facing right is also initialized to true. We can come down to flip and in here, just say facing direction times equals negative one. And that's just gonna change it between one and negative one every time we flip the character. Okay. So now we need to go to our jump function. And here we're going to have two else ifs, one for wall hop and one for wall jump. So let's start with the wall hop. The conditions for this is going to be as follows. We want to wall hop if the character is wall sliding and the movement input direction that the player is given equals zero and only if the character can jump. Now inside this else if, we're going to start off by specifying that is wall sliding is no longer true. We're going to subtract from the amount of jumps left. And then we're going to declare a new vector to force to add the same as we did with the movement. And we're going to set it equal to a new vector two. And in the x direction, we're going to spec we're going to use the wall hop force multiplied by wall hop direction multiplied by negative facing direction. And then in the y-axis, 
we're going to use wall hop force multiplied by in the x direction we're going to use wall hop force multiplied by wall hop direction dot x multiplied by negative facing direction and in the y we're going to use wall hop force multiplied with wall hop direction dot y also i just noticed that over here i used jump and not hop okay there we go and now all we need to do is add this force to the rigid body as a impulse so rigid body dot add force we're adding this force to add and we're adding it using force mode 2d dot impulse and now our next else if is going to be for wall jumping and the conditions for this one is if we are wall sliding and our movement input direction does not equal zero and we can jump. Now another condition I'm going to add here is instead of just being it if we are wall sliding also if we are touching the wall. So and so so that if the character is moving up against the wall and he wants to wall jump, he doesn't have to wait for the character to start moving down first and actually grab onto the wall. He can just push off the wall immediately. So we're going to say is wall sliding or is uh, touching wall. And then we're going to have exactly the same as we have before. So you can just copy this in here. But now we're going to use wall jump force and wall jump direction dot x. But instead of multiplying it by facing direction, we're going to multiply it by movement input direction. And then for y, it's again wall jump force and wall jump direction dot y. Now the last thing we need to do is make it so that the character can jump again when it is touching the, when it's wall sliding. So we can do that by coming to check if can jump and adding another condition into the if statement. And we'll say we can jump if these conditions are true or if we are wall sliding. And we also need to come into the first jump and add another condition here that says that we are not wall sliding. I'm going to set my wall hop direction to be 1 and 0 0.5, my wall jump to be 1 and 2. And now if we run the game, we'll see that the wall jumping and wall hopping is working perfectly. So we can slide down the wall. If we give input, we can jump off of the wall, jump it up. And if we don't give input, we can just hop off the wall. And yeah, that's how far I've come with this, uh, this controller. I'm planning on putting a lot more work into it. and. Uh, adding more to the game itself. I want to be able to open and close doors, maybe add some items and start working on some sort of combat. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. I hope you can now have a character that's fun to move around and jump off of walls. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something.